How's it going, airplane collectors? Welcome to a model airplane review. It's your host, Ray. In today's video, I'll be going over the Aviation 400 Asiana Airlines Airbus A380. This model was part of Aviation 400's first release with their new Airbus A380 mold, and so far, it's been well-received from the collecting community. In today's video, I'll talk about the box, then the model itself, and at the end of the video, I'll give my personal opinion about what I think of the model and whether or not I recommend it to other collectors. Starting up with the box, the box is a standard 1 to 400 scale model airplane box, and it's the same size as the boxes for Aviation 400 777-300s, as far as I'm aware. It's 19 centimeters, 19 and a half centimeters lengthwise, sorry, 19 and a half centimeters tall, and about 5 centimeters wide. I'll show you around the box now, so here's the front, bottom, right side, top, left side, and here's the back side. Before I start the review, I'd like to briefly comment on the box art. Here you can see that the box art image is an image of the real aircraft that is being replicated, which is quite interesting since Aviation 400 with most of the other A380s they just released, they chose to put the model airplane CGI on there. And they put the model airplane CGI at the bottom and top of the box, but I guess they chose not to do that for the front of the box, which is quite interesting. Once you open up the box, you get the model fully assembled, painted, and ready to go, a display stand, and two options for landing gear configuration, one in the extended position and one in the retracted position. For the majority of this review, I will demonstrate the model with the landing gear in the extended position, but later in the video I will show you guys what the landing gear covers look like for the retracted position. Here's what the model looks like on the included display stand, and to be upfront, the included display stand is quite garbage. It's made out of plastic and it's extremely hard to assemble, and once you do get it to assemble correctly, the display stand doesn't even fit into the model. I had to modify the rod that goes into the model in order for the model to fit on the display stand properly. And you'll notice the fit isn't really that good, as when I tamper with the model a little bit, it wobbles a lot. So it's not generally the smartest idea to put such a large and heavy model on a flimsy plastic display stand. So if you want to display this on a display stand, I recommend getting a different display stand and not using the included display stand. You might also see a little bit of a white mark on the display stand here. This is not included. This is a little addition that I added. It's a small sticker with the Asiana Airlines logo. So this is not included with the model. It's an aftermarket modification. Before I begin the review, I'd like to give you a quick 360 of the model so you can get a good look around it. The fuselage length for this model is 18 centimeters, the wingspan is 20 centimeters, mm -hmm. and it's about 6 centimeters tall. Accurate to 1 to 400 scale, and it's pretty large. I should also mention that this model is also is quite heavy because it is made primarily out of die-cast metal. Mm -hmm. Starting up the review at the front of the aircraft, here we can see the nose section of the airplane. Nose shape looks really good, and w compared to the competition, it's way better. So very solid job on the nose shape. There's lots of printed and painted detail to go around and I'm going to start moving the model down so you can see the fuselage. No complaints on any of the printed details. All of it looks pretty good. For the majority of the fuselage, the painted detail is also very nice. Paint looks good. Paint application is smooth overall. And every once in a while, I do find a little bit of a gray or black stain. And those are just little pieces of debris that I'm able to remove quickly with my finger. Now, at the rear section of the aircraft here, this is where the problems start, and I'm going to change the camera angle so you can see them better. So on the left side and bottom of the fuselage, there are three issues I, I'd like to point out. There's a little bit of a white gap in between the orange and red paint here, which indicates an issue with the paint application. There's also a bit of a red blot or drop of red paint there that's pretty noticeable. And there's a very small scratch right here in the red transitioning over to the beige color here. So paint application on this model wasn't really the best. Here's the vertical stabilizer. The vertical stabilizer looks pretty good. Lots of molded detail on there, which looks pretty accurate. And the painted detail on there looks pretty good. You can also see a nicely done Korean flag there, which looks really nice. I can see that it was done very highly detailed. And yeah, no complaints on the vertical stabilizer. It looks good. Before I show the right side of the fuselage, I'd like to show you a few more paint issues that I noticed on the right side of the fuselage. You can see a very defined line that extends from the beige up to the red, through the orange, and into the purple and blue sections 
of the paint here in the rear of the aircraft, which is quite interesting to see. I haven't seen anything like this on any other examples, nor have I seen issues with the paint on any of the other aircraft with different liveries. So I guess paint application on this particular example didn't go too well. There's also a bit of a white stain here on the orange, like on the other side. So that's rather upsetting to see. Now for the right side of the fuselage, aside from those issues, everything else looks pretty good. Printed detail looks solid. Painted detail for the rest of the, fus the fuselage looks good, and I have no complaints. Moving on to the wings. The wings on this model look pretty good. You can see a lot of molded, painted, and printed detail on there. The distinct difference between the grays on the wings is noticeable and the printed detail aligns pretty well with the paint. There's no issues with alignment there, and the molded detail is very easily noticeable, and the paint doesn't really fill in any of the gaps for where the molded detail is. So, very solid so far. On the right wing, you can see the aircraft's registration at the top, and at the bottom of the left wing, the aircraft's registration is also there. At the bottom of both wings, there really isn't that much detail to look at, so I won't comment on it very, uh, very much. On the fairings, you can see a little bit of a gray extension here. This is actually a fuel dump line, and it is painted on both fairings on the left and right wings. And it's a very small detail, but I find it very cool that uh, this detail was taken into account and included on the model. Going back to the rear of the aircraft, here we can see the horizontal stabilizers and the APU. Horizontal stabilizers look pretty good, no complaints. There's a bit of printed detail up at the top, but there's none at the bottom. The APU also looks very good. You can see a noticeable shape for the APU exhaust hole, which looks fantastic. Very nicely done back there. And here's what the bottom section of the rear of the aircraft looks like. Not really much to see other than the APU access doors. Moving on to the engines on this model. The engines on this model look fantastic. There's lots of painted and printed detail on them. You can sort of see some of the printed detail here on the outside of the engines there. Pylons look good, shape looks good, lots of detail on them as well. The exhaust section also looks good, the exhaust nozzles look like they're painted very nicely, but the most striking feature of the engines in my opinion is the fan blade details. The fan blades do spin on some of the engines, but not all of them, and when they do spin it is rather stiff, but given that this is a 1-400 to scale model, the fact that they don't spin is fine by me honestly. Uh, you can see that the, the number 2 engine here does spin, but the number 1 engine doesn't, so... Uh, it's really random in terms of the spinning. Here is the bottom of the right engines. Here you can get a better idea of the amount of printed detail that is on these engines. It looks very good. Uh, lots of detail to go around. Very impressed. In terms of aerial features, this model features sat domes, antennas, and 3D lights. At the top of the aircraft, there are three antennas, one at the rear section, one at the midsection, and one towards the front. There is one molded sat dome, which is outlined by a printed marking right here. I'll show you what it looks like a little bit better. There it is. And behind that, there are two 3D lights, which look really good. They're red. And there are two very small, I'm not sure what these are called, but there's two small additions here that look like miniature sat domes which is really impressive, and most of the time these are printed onto the model, but these are three-dimensional on this model. So very nicely done on detail with the aerial features. At the bottom of the aircraft, there is one singular antenna at the front section of the aircraft. It's right here, and it looks good. Now for one of the most defined features on this model, the landing gear. The landing gear on this model is pretty good. Main landing gear looks good, and you can see that they do detach from the model. Uh, detail is very nicely done, and I have no complaints really in terms of detail with the landing gear. The wheels on the nose gear do spin on this example, however on many models I have received reports and seen that the landing gear wheels on the, on the nose gear don't spin, so that's something to just mention. And the wheels do pivot, they do pivot rather freely, and on the main landing gear the wheels do spin, though some of them are a little bit stiff. So, as I just showed you, the landing gear do attach through a system of magnets. The fit is pretty well. Obviously, it's not good enough so you can roll the, the model very much, and, and you shouldn't be rolling in the first place. So, there's that. I should also mention that the landing gear that attaches to the fuselage here, there is no markings or indicators for which side they belong on, nor where, what the correct orientation is. So, you do have to be rather familiar with the Airbus A380 landing gear anatomy in order to put the landing gear on correctly. Here is what the landing gear covers look like for the retracted position configuration. 
They fit pretty well. The magnetic attachment is still rather weak, but it'll hold on if you choose to display the model. So it's weak, which means that removing them is very easy. Speaking of removing them, you get two plastic tools here, which are identical to the ones given on in-flight 200 models. So that's a cool feature. And yeah, they slip out nice and easily once you put the tool into the hole that is supposed to remove the landing gear cover. I should mention, just like the landing gear for the fuselage, the, the covers don't have any directional markings or indicators. However, they are directional in fact, so you do have to know which one goes in what slot. So make sure you uh, can see the difference between the two. Uh, yeah, aside from that, they fit pretty well to the fuselage. You can see the... They're almost seamless. The one on the nose is a little bit more uh, easy to see that there's a cover in there, but for the main landing gear, it's really nicely done, which is really nice to see. To finish off the review, here's a view at the front of the aircraft here. We can see gear balance, wing flex, and cockpit window printing. You can see the wings have a noticeable bend to them, and that's because that's how the wings are when the aircraft is on the ground. Obviously, that's not what they look like when the plane is in the air. Gear balance looks pretty solid, no complaints on the gear balance. Cockpit window printing looks pretty good. I don't think I see anything, my eyes might be playing a bit of a trick on me, but I don't think I see anything that's asymmetrical. So yeah, overall everything is very solid and the fact that the gear balance is almost perfectly balanced is pretty impressive because some models that are in 1 to 200 scale can't even achieve this. And that concludes the review. Now time for my personal opinion and recommendation. So overall, the model is pretty solid, although the pain issues were a rather unpleasant surprise. So I wouldn't say the model is perfect. Other examples from this mold are almost perfect, as you can see in some of my other reviews. But this one, unfortunately, wasn't perfect. So yeah, can't win every battle. And honestly, I didn't expect every model to be completely perfect either. So with that being said, I do recommend this model to other collectors, although it may have pain issues here and there. It's still a wonderful model that is very nicely detailed and quality control on this set of models was pretty perfect and consistent. So yeah, if you want to get one, get one. I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching. That concludes the review. I hope you liked the video. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more model airplane and siren content. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys in my next video.